anyways, I'm here with the mother and we're just gonna have like a mama and daughter talk in the bed. And we're gonna talk about the implications. Are you looking at me or the camera? Oh. <laughs> okay, anyways. I can make it equal. Yeah. <laughs> you look all beautiful and I just look like a rat. Like, <laughs> no, no. I'm sure I don't look beautiful. Yes, you do. This is my mom. <laughs> She's amazing. We're super close. I talked about her before on my channel. I'm like sitting on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> room. Well, you could scoot over a little bit, but then we won't be centered. Anyways. It's fine. We'll be fine. If I can't film the leg, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be talking about the implications of love and what else? Well, the, the implications or what kind of level of risk are you willing to take? Yeah to love somebody the hazards of love <laughs> yeah like the hazards because when you love somebody we're all flawless none of us are perfect i mean you yeah, exactly. always have problems and issues and some of us are just better at hiding them than other people yeah and so someone's really good at hiding their flaws and you think that they're amazing and then you start to find out that they do have these flaws or flawlets um, you're wondering do you actually love that person well you might love them but what level of risk are you willing to love them and continue loving them yeah. it's not about do you love them it's what's the level of risk you're willing to take to continue to love them but when that yeah. person's hurting you that's what we're gonna talk about right okay so how do we get into this well subject? i already got into it it's what are you comfortable at comfortable risking are you willing to risk getting your emotions distorted or your perception mental changed. abuse like are you willing to get the perception of life that you've always known altered and changed because this person yeah. is going to influence your perspective exactly. and everything that you knew is no longer going to be the same and now you're responsible for knowing more and having a wider range of options to think about right is that well like how willing, much are you willing to are you risk willing to it? do that and are you willing to be influenced by maybe factors that aren't that aren't even real so yeah. like maybe this person has a flawed perspective and mm -hmm. now they're talking you into believing this flawed perspective yeah or you they might not even tell you something to believe and they might just treat you bad now all of a sudden your perspective of yourself changed yeah. and you don't like yourself anymore and you hate yourself and now you want to hurt yourself because this person is not who you identify portrayed yeah. their their lack of dignity and tricked you into thinking that you don't have any value yeah. anymore are you willing to risk that to love somebody yeah. Because you didn't know who they were in the beginning. Yeah, it's really important to make sure you think about that, you know? Like, how much you're willing to give up, essentially. Yeah, what level of risk are you comfortable with? Are you willing to um, start compromising everything in your life? Yeah. Are you willing to compromise? Like, for example, what do you mean? Like, you want to get into, like, the things you might be compromising when you love somebody? You would now have to compromise how long it takes you to get out the door. You're now compromising what restaurant you want to eat at. You're now compromising the way that you look, because maybe that person's not comfortable with the way you dress. Are you willing to compromise half the part of your money to help yeah. this person? If this person Sharing your space with someone. What if this person can't pay their bills? Are you willing to help compromise your money that you work for at work? to give it to them not knowing if this person is yeah. going to work out or not and you lost that money and you can't get it back yeah. are you willing to compromise your belief system because you might not be able to believe what you used to believe anymore because somebody added missing factors and they just like you said they distorted or they changed, they changed just, your perspective yeah, they distorted it and so now that you have more pieces to the puzzle of the certain belief that you once held it no longer can be the same belief because now you gotta compromise your belief and and mm -hmm. combine your belief with their belief. Um, are you willing to be quiet when when you're mad and not say something? And you know they're wrong. Yeah, and just in and, and be humble when some when they do you wrong. Are you willing to forgive all the time? Are you and not just say that you forgive, but genuinely like have no bitterness to in your heart towards the situation. Yeah, that's a, that's something that takes. Lot of temperance in your character yeah it's not even about them anymore it's about you and how you're reflecting your own character and like 
no matter what the circumstance is, if you have complete control over yourself in any circumstance, then Nobody you have the power. You. Yeah, you have the power. And then, like, that's on you. That's about your character and how you, you know, deal with certain situations, how you react to certain but things. But like we talked about earlier, it's about you being stable in the character that you created in yourself. So if you've yeah. been self-reflecting and being self-aware and you've been working inside, you can't let that other person right. influence you and now you're not stable. Well then what, what the heck were you doing for the last 10 years working exactly. on yourself if you allow the person you work to just make you unstable mentally? Or cross your boundaries. Or cross your boundaries. You, you're, then you, you, all that work you put into yourself is just out the door yeah, and down the point sewer. It's just flush down the toilet mm -hmm. so you have to be able to know that you can be stable when they're not stable they might not be stable and they might not even treat you right but when they don't treat you right you're still the same person mm -hmm. and you're still stable you're still consistent so, in your character traits mm -hmm. so where do you draw the line between keeping your peace and separating yourself because it's come to a point and maybe not just like in your own life but and if it was someone else's situation where they obviously shouldn't be in that situation, where do you draw the line of keeping the peace, loving them anyways, and leaving? Like, I, obviously you weren't going to stay with my dad. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that um, it comes down to how far you traveled on your journey and you're able to stay stable yeah. in a toxic relationship. So if you're able to stay pretty stable, like if your baseline of stability of your character traits is six out of seven, yeah. like six days out of seven, you you can probably withstand it. If your baseline is zero or two times out of seven, that means that person's got you all messed up and, and they don't, yeah. you're not stable anymore. You lost yourself. But what if you've grown up in an environment where that is normal to you so you're able to handle that even though it's then not you, right? Then, then you're not far enough along your journey because you haven't self-reflected and you haven't right. done enough self-work to be in a relationship like that. Yeah, I guess. So the thing is, is it's not, and, and also like, it depends if you believe in karma and mm -hmm. if you believe if you believe in karma you don't gotta fight with somebody you can keep your peace they can lie to you cheat on you it's not and your you problem still have to peace with. because you're like i don't gotta worry about what you did bad to me that you did me bad because karma's gonna get you mm -hmm. i just gotta sit over here stay stable in my character yeah. traits and let karma do its job and it's not our job to do it and i think too that it, it matters um in karma but it also the it depends if you believe in predestination or if you don't. Because if you believe in predestination, you're going to believe that everything works itself out to the way it's supposed to be. So if you're not sure if you're supposed to leave or not, and you believe in predestination, you can wait it out. Because predestination will take take care of it. Yeah. If you don't believe in that, then you don't have to go deal with it. So it depends on your belief system where that line right. is. And everybody's belief system is going to be different. If you believe in twin flames, then you're gonna believe that you can't get away from this person yeah. because you're stuck together to teach each other something. You know, I feel like it's, mm, I, I, I definitely think there's a difference between a soulmate and mm -hmm. like a soul, like a twin flame or mm -hmm. like a what's the other one? Um, because soulmates can be someone completely evil, like your um, paramedic. What is it? And there's 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 a karmic too. Karmatic partner, or whatever. Yeah, that, I yeah. mean, and a twin flame is you can never really get away from them. You get away from them. Separation together, separation together. But yeah, they're there to teach you something. There's character traits in you that this person has to develop inside of you through their mishap of, of right. behavior that they treat you. But the reason why you gotta develop these these traits is because your twin flame refines you for your purpose. Right. And you would never get to your purpose without this twin flame refining you. And a lot of people don't realize that, oh, Twin Flames, it's not even on YouTube. It's just something I know. <laughs> I just you know have to have I've rain before it. you have a rainbow. Well, I just, in my that's own experiences, like, like, well, that's just an analogy, you know? Yeah, but it's just like, I've learned through experience. I didn't, I can't even look this up on YouTube because this is my personal experience that makes me figure this out, that you can never get to your purpose because this person provokes you so much yeah. that you have no choice but to die or deal with it. Get your crap together and figure out what yeah. you, what what you gotta do. 
but when yeah. you're in the process of getting your crap together and figuring and out that's what you hard, gotta do, you know, it's not you easy. find your purpose. You just kind of bump into your purpose. And if you did, if you don't do the work inside, you're always chasing a dream, but you never get there. Yeah. But if you work on yourself inside, you'll just like bump into it, and you'll be like, "Oh, that was a great opportunity." Yeah. I didn't even know I like ran that into good that decision. opportunity. Yeah. But you will never bump into your purpose. Unless so, you start yeah. going and looking for it. So and if you look at that, all goes back to the level of risk that you're willing to take. Is how much are you willing to go through and endure of pain yeah. to get to your purpose? Or are you just going to not go through all that pain, but then always be empty inside because you never find your purpose? It makes sense. You, you've got to hurt one way or the other. And sometimes the truth hurts. Well, you either got to hurt with emptiness that you don't find your purpose, because you didn't do the work inside, or you gotta hurt inside because someone's caused pain that maybe you need to develop inside. But then you get the fulfillment and of being like, yeah. you know what? No, look at me now. Yeah. Look at me now. Look where I'm at now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for hurting me. And giving me motivation. Because now I am who I am. Because of you. Because I had no choice but to grow because of what you did to me over and over again. Yeah. So that that's about the level of risk that you want. And like, I think I personally had to go through that with like my dad and like choosing to what point, sorry, my brother's screaming, to what point am I willing to love my dad because he's my dad and draw a boundary? You know what I mean? Like what, at what point am I willing to risk keep loving him for my own sake, you know? Mm -hmm. And you have to choose, like, are you going to deal with it? Or are you just going to do something about it? But it's hard to know the difference and um you know i think when you're not supposed to be somewhere or someplace mm -hmm. you just know and things just line up on their own to just kind of separate it something will happen that will separate you and i don't think you have to lose sleep meditating on which way to go yeah because that's what i'm doing it's not helping <laughs> So it's not the right way. So I gotta figure out that I either have to pick that I believe in predestination or I have to believe in taking it into your own hands. Taking it into my hands. And that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. I don't have that answer yet. Yeah. Well, going back to the, the question If any of you guys dad, know the answer, let us know. <laughs> Comment down below because. Because, like, me and your dad, I knew. I just knew. Like, didn't you see red flags when you, like, met him? Mm hmm Or when you were married? Mm hmm And there's a point where, like, um, then I could, I was like, he said, what, what, like, I jumped up and slapped him back, and he's, like, five feet taller than me. Yeah, this man's, like, six, six. And I And like, you were, like, what, five, four? Yeah, and I, like, had to jump. Five four with, uh, with an attitude. <laughs> yeah, and jump up and smack him back. Um, but now I feel like I've been depressed for so long that I treasure peace more than revenge. Mm -hmm. I treasure self growth from the from the pain. I am now seeing that pain can just be a, the best treasure. Of self growth, mm -hmm. if you can learn over that revenge or that. Well, if you can too. learn that growing pains hurt, and that's why you're hurting, because you're trying, because you're growing inside. It's like and a kid they growing, and they get those weird. They're getting pains in their leg when the kid grows, mm -hmm. and it hurts, but they can't grow without that pain. Yeah. But I think that love. I'm can, like leaning. <laughs> like love can be growing pains of that self growth and then I treasure when I hurt being like what do I need to learn from this heartache? Yeah. This heartache isn't for nothing. My heart is hurting because it's trying to tell me something. Mm -hmm. And that it's not always to tell me to leave. It's something that's telling me there's a characteristic of inside that I'm supposed to develop. Mm -hmm. And until you can keep peace within, you haven't found inner peace. You haven't found inner peace. 
when you when someone's been treated too bad over and over again and you still have peace and dignity and strength and clarity mm -hmm. and you can still function and you're not depressed crying in your bed that's when you found peace. and you have the power it, it's the same way whether you believe in jesus or not isn't the point the point is a story is a story and the story goes when this man was on the cross he asked his father father forgive them for they know not what they're doing and um it's about having peace enough to forgive them like it's and, not about what they do and, it's and about not only did he person. he forgive them he invited them to, to the kingdom he said you know today i tell you you'll be in the kingdom mm -hmm. and so until you can invite in and keep peace into your enemy when someone can yell at you, swear at you, they can say slanders, they can verbally abuse you, and you still keep peace with them because you're stable in your character. Yeah. That they can't change your characteristics because you're that stable in your mental health and who you are. That's when you've grown as a person. And you have arrived to the point that you can really fulfill and tap into your purpose. Yeah. And that's when you can really feel the God or the universe's collective love. But yeah, that's the complications or the, what was the word that we were using? The love of this. Or the implications, the implications of love. And I think that when you love somebody or you've been loved by somebody, you leave a scar. And you're as pure as And they will definitely scar you and you'll never be the same again. But it also can do that in a way where it, it changes your life in a whole different outcome than you didn't even think of but for the better. Mm. But yeah, if you guys want more videos like this, just give this video a thumbs up if you want and subscribe. Um, um, do you want to record more videos when you're being on here? Yeah, when I'm in that in the vortex in my vortex yeah that was fun thank you for the opportunity yeah i hope you guys learned something um or if you have a question you want us to talk about yeah leave it down below we can answer because we go deep we go really deep and we can answer things that's just kind of how we are naturally like we just just have to really think about it and yeah come up with things that make sense because you can't make sense out of nothing yeah. so you gotta go deep to get something mm -hmm. okay well I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. You gotta take a thumbnail picture now. Okay. What should, should we do for the thumbnail? Well, we, we gotta... Like, we're like talking about implications of love, but we gotta have like serious words and things, right? Oh, I thought we were gonna be happy. Cause the implications of love. Oh. <laughs> implications okay. of love How about... and love. Or like, are we like explaining or like talking? Like, I could be looking like this and you could be looking at me. Well, you're looking away. Okay, I'm looking at you now. Okay, we'll see if that works. Hope it works. Does she want you to put on her love? <laughs> Okay, we need to make sure the audio is I am Mama. Up. This is Mama. <laughs> My sister is in the background. I don't like the, how the angle looks. Hold on. Make sure the angle is I know, it's bothering me. me. I gotta, I know, it's not working for me either. No, I'm saying make sure it does work for me. I heard you. <laughs> My word. Okay, like, make me a nervous wreck and then we're gonna delete the whole video. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. I feel like that with a lot of my videos. A lot of my videos on like, my channel should be deleted. Then, then just a two-year-old recording of themselves.